Hi everybody, it's Adam from Lucid Pixel, and I'm freezing my ass off for you, so you better appreciate this. Right now I'm outside the St. Joseph's Oratory. Let me see if I can venture turning this camera around so you can get a little peek at where I actually am located. What? Yeah, I'll, I'll try to show you some cool footage of that in a little bit. But I tried to find the least windiest corner so I could shoot this. I was actually just testing on my equipment. I thought, hey, let's do an art talk. Why not? We're here. I got my mic, I got all my stuff set up, let's do this. What I want to talk about is something extremely exciting and something I've been dying to share with you for quite some time now. Over the course of my career, I have been either coerced or forced into different facets of art, be it 3D animation or be it dance or be it music, and most recently, photography and videography. In the process of exploring this new passion of mine, something that I've really taken for granted my whole life, it reconnected me with a feeling and experience that we can often lose sight of. And that is the excitement of being new to something and what that brings to your life and what that brings to your career in general. And one of the things that I keep learning time and time again is the fact that this world of digital painting that we live in, that what this channel is all about, is only one small facet of the world of art. And furthermore, one of the things you realize after you get to know a certain art well enough is that all arts are pretty much the same. Yes, they utilize different parts of our, our body, so to speak, but in the end, the learning process, what we are ultimately after is pretty much the same thing, of means to communicate our emotions, our feelings, our life experiences, our desires, our views with the world around us. Now, I am a big advocate for mastering something, not being the type of person that spreads themselves out too thin and tries to be a jack of all trades. Don't confuse that with not broadening your horizons and exposing yourselves to different school of thought to help you enhance the kind of artist, the type of communication you're trying to do. I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. One of the things that I've mentioned in earlier art talks is the fact that at a certain point in my career, namely when I first graduated from uh, fine arts and from classical animation and I was a new artist in the industry ready to launch myself into this world of classical animation 3d started to really become popular and jobs became extremely scarce big studios that that would employ hundreds if not thousands of classical animators like myself went bankrupt leaving me a rookie animator at the bottom of the food chain so after about half a year of humming and hawing i decided that the best step would be to learn 3d animation and at first i felt very forced into it and as you know by following my channel it didn't become my life's pursuit however what I learned from 3D animation and how I applied that to all of the different arts, how I applied that to digital painting, how I applied that to classical animation, how I apply this knowledge to videography and photography has been... Okay, I gotta keep an eye out for falling glass because that, that shit's scary, but I digress. What it's, what it's contributed to traditional animation and digital painting and concept art and my understanding of lighting and photography and videography, what I'm doing right now has been incredibly, incredibly wonderful and beneficial. For instance, as traditional artists, we learn how to render and understand different basic principles of light, key light and bounce light and maybe rim light and fill light and those different types of things. But when you're actually in the 3D context, when you've modeled your first object and you wanna light this object and start to create a scene that feels believable, well, then you have to create a light. What kind of light are you gonna use? A direct light or a spotlight? Maybe I'll go with a spotlight this time. So you make a spotlight, but it just makes this plain looking flat, sharp circle on the ground. Nothing particularly interesting. So then you have to learn about fall off and penumbra to soften that light and have a nice more natural fall off of light. But I can't see the ray of light. It's just this circle on the ground. So you realize you have to apply a particle effect to that, a smoke effect or something like that. So you do, and now you can see the beam, but it's just this flat, opaque triangle. And yes, there's a helicopter flying overhead and a car driving by. It's just this opaque triangle. So then you realize you have to start playing around with the properties of, of this atmospheric effect. Maybe dispersing it a little bit more, adding a bit more gravity to it, making it a little bit less dense, 
creating a little bit more of a random fall off to make it feel more like a natural soft atmospheric effect that's catching the light type of idea. You start to take more hands-on control over the subtleties of these atmospheric effects of this lighting. What about when you get into ray tracing? What about multiple different bounce lights that are all bouncing around? How does that affect color as color bounces from one thing to the next? How does it actually look in the context of real life versus what you think it's supposed to look like? Right? All of these things become very, very crucial to your understanding of art and how you apply that in a, a two-dimensional rendering. Now, if you've been following my channel for any length of time, you'll notice that as of late 2018, the video quality of my films really, really took off. And that's because I developed this insatiable passion for photography and videography. And I started learning about cameras and lenses and, and lighting and settings and all different types of things. And I had so much fun really, really sprucing up my channel and really having a lot of fun and now finding new locations to shoot awesome videos and stuff like that. It's a lot of fun. But not only has it been fun learning about photography, but what it has contributed to my understanding of concept art, how it has affected my teaching at Lucid Pixel with my private mentorship has been unbelievable. And what's really interesting is you realize that through all of these different types of visual art, be it 3D, be it photography or videography, be it concept art or illustration, be it any of these different things, everybody has their own unique way of going about learning. Every different one of these different venues of art have their unique perspective on how to control light, how to create composition, all of these different types of things. And what's really fun is the fact that although we are so closely interconnected and although there is of course a crossover of knowledge, certain things that are considered common knowledge and common principle when it comes to, for instance, photography and videography, I know from 20 years of experience, we don't even really hear about or ever explore as concept artists. For instance, the fall off of light, depth of field, how to control light so that it spills onto your figure, but not onto the background. What's the difference between loop lighting and butterfly lighting and Rembrandt lighting and side lighting and under lighting? Well, every one of these different approaches to lighting can create a different mood, a different effect. Some are more intended for beauty, some are more intended for drama. And all of these bits of knowledge are all sitting at our fingertips, helping us to enhance our illustration and concept art. And vice versa, one of the things that has contributed hugely to my passion for photography and videography is all of these things that I've learned over the years with regards to concept art. How I can apply all of these same rules of light and texture and color and form and composition and movement and gesture and expression and apply those towards photography. No knowledge is lost. Each one feeds into the other one in a beautiful way. And the same thing applies to every other art you can imagine. Be it cooking, be it dancing, be it aesthetics, be it literature and writing. The world's your oyster. Yeah, 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 I know I'm back home now. <laughs> and look, there's, there's me. Look, it's me. I'm there and I'm here too. How is this possible? When I was in the church, I had to be a little bit too quiet and I, I saw, there was too many of the background noises and stuff like that. So I decided I wanted to reshoot it. So here I am. But here's the thing. These new sources of knowledge, of expertise that you can apply to whatever art it is that you're pursuing is only a small fraction of the benefit that you get from opening yourself up to different practices, opening yourself up to different worlds of thought. But it's the communities, it's the people that you connect to that make all the difference. One of the things I cannot be more grateful for is the people that I've met, the friends that I've made, the connections that I've made, the opportunities that I've had as a result of this new passion are incredible. Things that wouldn't have existed had I only been sitting behind my desk drawing every single day. Every Christmas for the last several years, I head down to Ottawa to hang out with some very dear friends of mine for a Christmas party and just to catch up. And when I was there, because everybody knew I was big into photography and videography and all that kind of stuff, everybody kept telling me, you gotta meet this guy. He's a super awesome guy. He's also a photographer. I'm sure you guys are gonna have a lot in common. And this was somebody that I already knew, but didn't even know that he was a photographer. And 
in this party with, uh, I don't know, upwards to about 100 people, and this place was packed. We spent about three hours at that party, leaning up against a fridge, drinking wine, and yapping about all different kinds of amazing stuff. We had this commonality between the two of each other. He shared some of his photographs with me, he showed me some of the videos he's recording, and we've made a friendship based on our shared passion. Just last week, I got together with a friend of mine who I actually met through the salsa community, my friend Elias. And, and yet, although we met through Dancing Salsa, something that we both do very passionately, he actually runs a school where he has three different studios in Montreal. He's a big name in Montreal as far as salsa goes. But it was through our love of photography and videography and camera equipment and all this type of stuff that we started to find yet another common ground. Before you knew it, we were sending messages back and forth talking about audio equipment and video equipment and different types of techniques and different types of lighting. He'd ask me questions based on my videos and vice versa. And yet again, we started to strengthen our friendship through this common passion. He invited me last week over to his place for a project. It's something that I'm going to let all of you know about really soon. You're going to get a chance to know this awesome guy. This not only amazing dancer, but this awesome person as well. Something again, that an experience that again, I wouldn't have had had I only been painting digitally. Then came last week where I was researching audio equipment, the very audio equipment that I'm using right now to record this video. And I was looking for a windscreen for my mic and all that kind of stuff and I looked far and wide and could not find it. And this is a very popular mic, so I was really surprised about this, except for this one guy in Australia named Benin, who has this amazing vlog. And, I and sure enough, he posted a video where he was testing the windscreen on this windy Australian mountain just outside of Sydney. So I got in touch with him in the comments and I asked him questions about which one I should get, and as far as he knew, blah, 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 and we got into this whole conversation about it. After which, I ended up finding out the real proper windscreen for this mic, and I posted a video giving credit to him. Lo and behold, the next day, he's posted this beautiful vlog on his YouTube channel where he's talking about me. And it's like, I've made a friend across the planet between Montreal and Australia based on an accessory for a common passion, vlogging, right? We're talking about mics in this particular case. It gave us an excuse to get to know each other and to appreciate each other. And since then, I've been watching his vlogs every single day. It's, they're completely addictive. Watching his vlogs on surfing in Australia and watching the beautiful beach and hearing him talk about his favorite bands and all these different types of things that are going on. Something that never would have happened if I was only tapping into a single resource. It's incredible how after only months after picking up this passion, how I teach, how I paint, how I live, where I go, what I do, how I perceive this world around me has completely and utterly transformed. How much more I love my art now, now that I have this new way of exploring it. It's so amazingly exciting. To me, the greatest excitement is the fact that after doing this for over 20 years, realizing yet again that I'm just a beginner, Realizing yet again that this is only one of many different things I'm going to be exploring. And just thinking about it, I can think of a handful of different things I could get better at that could help enhance me as a person, that could open me up to different communities, that could open me up to different wells of knowledge right off the top of my head. And I know I'm gonna do them. And this to me is the most absolutely exciting thing in the world. Thank you very much for joining me in today's art talk. Remember, I have my private online art mentorship, Lucy Pixel. You can go and check that out below. And of course, don't forget about my brand new weekly series, Behind the Scenes. Every Monday, I release a new video where you can learn practical new tips and tricks when it comes to producing art and when it comes to the art industry in general. All of that kind of stuff that helps feed your career and feed your profession. So definitely go and check that out as well. Happy painting, everybody, and take care.